Um, first of all, you'll recall in 1978, Margaret Thatcher was elected prime minister of the UK by parliament and or made prime minister by parliament and uh, as a consequence of an election that put the, the, the conservative party, the Tories in power. And immediately uh, began austerity policies and privatization policies, which continue to this day. And two years later, Ronald Reagan was elected president of the United States and began austerity policies here in this country, which continue to this day. And, and the United States and the United Kingdom have been largely, up until the last few years, largely unique in the world as being the countries where the neoliberal experiment, the austerity experiment, was really played out in a big way. And then the European Union thought, hey, this is kind of a good idea. Let's do Thatcherism, Reaganism here for the entire European Union, which took down Greece and Spain and Italy and, and uh, Portugal and uh, is whacking Ireland. And now you've got you know, this big movement uh, in France, the Yellow Jackets. One of their major demands right now is get out of the EU. You know, we want our own Brexit, a Frexit, a French exit. In the midst of all this, Philip Alston, who is the UN's rapporteur, rapporteur on extreme poverty and human rights, went on a two-week fact-finding mission to the United Kingdom and had just issued his report. And it's scathing. He said, this is not just a disgrace, but a social calamity and an economic disaster. Now, keep in mind, the same thing is happening in the United States. Right now, the top 1% own 40% of our wealth. The bottom 90% own 23% of our wealth. Just 15 years ago, the top 1% had a third and the bottom 90% had a third. Now the bottom 90% has dropped from a third to 23%. The top 1% has gone from a third all the way up to 40%. Well, the same thing's happening in the UK. He writes, 14 million people, a fifth of the population, live in poverty, and 1.5 million are destitute, unable to afford even basic essentials. He said, and I quote, it is patently unjust and contrary to British values that so many people are living in poverty. This guy is, uh, his, Britain is his home country. He said, adding that compassion had been abandoned during almost a decade of austerity policies and had been so profound that key elements of the post-war social contract have been swept away. He adds, this is, quote, obvious to anyone who opens their eyes to see the immense growth in food banks and the queues waiting outside them, the people sleeping rough in the streets, the growth of homelessness, the sense of deep despair that leads even the government to appoint a minister for suicide prevention and civil society to report in depth on the unheard of levels of loneliness and isolation. You'll recall, I'm not going to dig it out and reread it today. I've done it so many times in the last few months. Uh, in 2002, the BBC published an article titled More Suicides Under Conservative Rule. And it was a study done out of Australia, looking at the UK and Australia between 1901 and 1999. This was published in 2002 comparing suicide rates in both countries with which political party was in charge. And what they found was that when conservatives were in charge, suicides went up, particularly among working age men. And when liberals were in charge, when the labor parties were in charge, suicides went down. We're seeing the same thing right now in the UK. We're seeing the same thing right now in the United States, although very few people are talking about it. The Guardian reports that uh, uh, Philip Alston uh, highlighted the chancellor's decision in this month's budget to give a tax cut to the rich rather than using that money to alleviate poverty for millions. This is exactly what's happening in the United States. It is exactly what's happening in the United States. He said he had met people who did not have a safe place for their children to sleep, people who had sold sex for money or shelter, young people who felt gangs were the only way out of destitution, people with disabilities who were being told they needed to go back to work or lose support against the doctor's orders. He described how town, local budgets, town budgets, had been gutted in England, resulting in a record sell-off of libraries and parks and closures of youth centers. We're seeing all this in the United States. This is, this is Reaganism and Thatcherism, also known as the conservative agenda. He said, I was surprised by the talk of suicide by the people I met who said that they had considered suicide and never had in the past. UK austerity. 
Meanwhile, get ready for things to get worse. This is what Reaganism and Thatcherism bring you, is wild swings in capitalism, wild swings in the economy. This from uh, today's uh, New York Times dealbook briefing newsletter. Stocks around the world are being, are being pummeled. Commodities are tumbling. If this persists or grows worse, it cr could create a damaging feedback loop. I would say we are already in that damaging feedback loop. U.S. home builder confidence, this is the headline in the financial, in the, excuse me, from the NASDAQ, the stock exchange from their news service. U.S. home builder confidence unexpectedly slumps in December. The National Association of Home Builders released a report on Monday unexpectedly showing a continued deterioration in confidence in the month of, November, of December. You'll recall I reported last month that November was the first month that we saw an actual decline in the number of homes that were being built, a decline in, in uh, housing prices or in the rate of growth of housing prices. This says the unexpected drop by the housing index, housing market index reflect decreases in all of the component indexes. That's you know purchasing materials, purchasing land, selling new houses, selling used houses, selling uh, you know plumbing fixtures, sell I mean you name it, selling furnaces, selling washing machines. All this stuff is declining right now, which is you know this is the beginning. I mean the, it is generative. It does feed on itself. I mean the deal book today, the New York Times deal book is saying, look out, this might feed on itself. Yeah. And you'll recall in 2008, in November of 2008, the, oh, the, the, thing, that, uh, the thing that really led in 2008, the thing that really led to the uh, collapse of the housing markets, or of the, or the financial markets, was that uh, companies stopped borrowing. They couldn't borrow. And, and that locked up the markets. Well, this is the front page of today's Financial Times. U.S. credit markets are grinding to a halt. Not a single company has borrowed money through the 1.2 trillion U.S. high yield corporate bond market this month. It'll be the first month since November 2008. You're listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. Now we're only two weeks into the month, but if that drought persists, the Financial Times writes, it would be the first month since November 2008 that not a single high yield bond priced in the market.